All right, so welcome back to statistics. Statistics. Uh, this is our last kind of section on our chi-square test, and we're looking at if two items are independent to each other. So are they related in any way? So as one increases, does the other one increase? Or as one decrease, does the other one increase? Um, anything like that. So we're trying to see, is there a relationship uh, between our two variables? And that's what we're going to use our chi-square test for. So it's not going to be just looking for a distribution how it's distributed, we're going to be looking and see are they independent of each other. So if, you know, the uh, the first example we have is someone playing tennis. So um, we'll get and go through that one. So test for independence. So in this test we will be comparing two variables to see if they are independent or dependent on each other. So if they're independent that means that they are, they don't affect each other. So as um, as you grow taller, you end up being smarter. Okay, those are independent of each other. Just because you're taller doesn't mean you're smarter. Just because you're shorter doesn't mean you're dumber. Okay, those are independent. Things that would be dependent would be, um, you know, like as somebody gets older, they usually make more money. Okay, those are dependent on each other. Um, you know, the older you are, the the more you weigh. Type of stuff. Okay, so in general sense, they're more on the dependent side. Okay, okay, all right. And that's my dog. Hey, come, come. We're not fine. Ignore me. Okay, so uh, let's say we're playing tennis. Okay. So let's say we're playing tennis and, um, or Deb and Bob are playing tennis. And so the table below shows how often they win depending on how often they warm up. So if they were dependent, it wouldn't matter how long they would warm up. Uh, one person would always be better than the other. So you think about this, if you're playing a professional or even an amateur uh, tennis player, they're probably going to beat you even if they don't warm up. And no matter how much you warm up, they're probably still going to beat you 99% of the time. Uh, professional will probably beat you 100% of the time. Uh, if they're dependent on each other, that means that it would be like if, you know, I went out and played with someone else who'd never played tennis before. The more we practice, um, the more one of us practices, the better one of us gets. The more somebody warms up, the better one of them is. Okay, So that's where it would be dependent on each other. So as you warm up, the advantage swings to one person. So we have this table here that shows a 10 minute warm up, 20 minute warm up, or more than 20 minutes, and who wins. So as you notice, in looking at it, it kind of looks like as they warm up, Deb is more likely to win. Um, and if they just go out and play, Bob is a better tennis player. But as you notice with this table, we have our categories, Bob and Deb win, and then the amounts, and then we also have the totals. The totals are gonna be the key for this um, test. Okay. All right. So here's how we do our expectation or how we expect each one should be. So to calculate those, we take the total in a row times the total in a column and then divide it by the total number of observations. Okay. So we take an entire row total, multiply it by the title total column column, and then divide it by the entire total. So if you look over here, back here, we would take an entire row and an entire column, multiply them together, and then divide them by the grand total. Okay, And that's how much we would expect it to be. So looking at this, so let's start with the first one. So at 0, from 0 to 10, so Deb is expected to win about 8 because we take 23, we multiply it by 18, the totals in each row and column, and then we divide it by the grand total, which would be 50. So the expected wins that Deb should have, if they were independent, should be about 8.28. Okay, so we're trying to see if they are independent. So if the warm-up doesn't matter, she should have gotten about 8 wins. She only had 4. So now we will statistically see if that is a difference or not. Okay, and you would go through and do this with every single row and column and every single box. So in this example, there would be six different ones you'd have to do. Okay, so we would continue doing it for every single one. So that first one was 8.28. This one down here, the 14, we'd end up taking 18 times 27 and divide it by 50. For the 10, 
the 10, we take 23 times 19 and divide it by 50. And that's to find this number. And we do it for every single one, and we calculate our expected. So these should be our expecteds. Okay. So as you see, Deb should have won around 8.2, and then 8.7, and then around 6 for the 20 minutes, while Bob should have won almost 10, around 10, and then 7 for the last one. Okay. So that's how we get our numbers. That's how we get our expecteds for these. So the expecteds, you take the boxes and you multiply them. Now, for the most part, you're not going to have like a huge set of boxes. Um, that you're going to have to do this like a hundred times. But for the most part, it's fairly straightforward. It's a fairly easy calculation. Again, you have to find the totals to do it, um, the totals of each row and each column, and then divide it by the grand total Okay, to find those. So those are our expected. So that's what we're going to use for it. So now we're going to use our hypothesis test. Now this, um, this step one is slightly different because instead of saying that they are, uh, you know, it's a, it's a distribution based on this. Our null and alternative hypotheses are going to be mentioning specifically what we are seeing if they're independent of each other. So is warm-up time independent to the eventual winner, okay, or to the winner? So that would be your HO. So your HO is that they are independent. Your H1 is that they are not independent, okay? So it's always independent for the null, not independent for the alternative. Okay. Step two, which is stating our alpha, we're going to say alpha is 0.1, so we're saying it's about 90 percentile. So we're going to say we're about 90 percent sure about something. And then step three is what test you're using, in which we're using a chi-square test for independence is what we would be using. Okay. All right. So moving on to our next step, step four, we have to find our degree of freedom. Now this degree of freedom is slightly different because we take our rows minus one times our column minus one and that is our degree of freedom okay so our degree of freedom is rows minus one columns minus one so how many total rows there were minus the number of columns so uh, the number of rows was only two because we had Bob and Deb okay so that would be two minus one and our columns, we had three. We had from zero to 10 minutes, we had 10 to 20 minutes, and we had more than 20 minutes, okay? So our degree of freedom would end up being two because it'd be two times one, which means our degree of freedom is two. Then you go over and you take your, your chi-squared chi test sheet, and you find that your critical value would be about 4.605, okay? And that was at that 0.1 alpha with a degree of freedom of two. So you see it's a fairly low number, lower than what we're usually dealing with. But, you know, sometimes you deal with a high number, sometimes you deal with a low. Step five is stating your, um, stating your uh, decisions, decision statement. So we reject an all hypothesis if the critical chi-squared value is greater than the calculated chi-squared value, otherwise fail to reject. Okay, so it should say otherwise fail to reject um, on there saying what happens if you don't. Okay, so that would be your step five. So again, we're looking to see if it's greater than 4.605. If it is, we reject. So now we go through and do all our math. So now that we have our expecteds, now we can go through and we can find our chi squared, which is again the same formula O minus E squared all over E, and then find the sum of them. So we would take these expecteds and these obser observed, and we'd subtract the square and divide, and we end up with a number of about 7.25. Okay, so 7.25. Okay. All right, so 7.25. So going on to step seven, would we reject or fail to reject our previous statement? That's right, we would end up rejecting it because it is larger than 4.06, 4.605. Uh, so we end up rejecting our null hypothesis. Now, if we reject our null hypothesis, why? If we reject our null hypothesis, um, what does that mean in our statement? Is it independent or is it dependent on each other based on our level? So based on this, we probably would say that yes, it is more likely that they are dependent on each other because that chi-squared is um, higher. So that means that warming up and who wins, the more they warm up, the person that 
uh, one person is more favored to win than the other. Okay, so that's our step eight. Um, now we could go a step farther, and we could mention that we'd say we're about 97% sure that they're not independent. Okay, so there is a way to do that, which you end up looking back at your chi-squared sheet. Okay, and with a degree of freedom of two. Okay, so a degree of freedom of two, we look at this row right here, and we go, okay, our number that we got was about seven point something, which was around here, which this number is around 97.5%. And as you see, we're a little bit under that, so that means that we would say that we're about 97% sure. So that's just taking the extra step if you want to go back to your sheet, you want to go, okay, in my row, where am I closest to? And in this case, I'm closest to that, which would put us at about 75. If it was closer to that 9, it would be closer to a 99%. Um, and then if it's closer to 0 0.05, if it was close to 6, we would say it's about a 95%. So it just depends on where it is. And that's just taking the extra step if you want to know the percent, how sure you are of something. Okay. All right, so here's an example of another one. Um, you know, that you can work through if you want. That's basically it for our independent tests, okay, which is our last section dealing with our chi-squared tests.